Hey, this is Jessica Hammer, host of Crowned and Dangerous. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Rachel Mullins, host of Hashtag No Filter Friday here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my new show, Hashtag No Filter Friday, where we talk about all of the sexual misconduct allegations swirling around Hollywood. A new show drops every Friday at 8.30 Pacific Standard Time. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of Hashtag No Filter Friday. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Welcome to Beauties and Headcanons, where we're nerdy and you probably are too. This is Lindsay, and I'm here today with Elizabeth and Emily, and um, we have a really fun nerdy topic to talk to you about. So one of the main things I remember in elementary school was, I don't remember if it was every day or um, once a week, but going down to the library. Do you remember those wire racks and having to search through all the books that were on throughout the entire library, trying to figure out what you wanted to read? And I never really understood how we had silent reading time, but then we also had those books that we had to read for class. And then later on in high school, I had to start doing active reading where you had to highlight things and write in the cover of your book and do all of these ridiculous things to get something out of what you were reading. But to be honest, most of us figured out something that we were getting from reading because we read those books and we wanted to learn more. And they started to kind of become a part of who we were and what we wanted to do. So today, that's what we're going to talk nerdy to you about. This episode is brought to you by Squadcast. As podcasters who all live in different states and time zones, one of the most important things when we record, which we always do remotely, is the quality of our audio together. Current solutions like Skype, which we have used, and Zoom are dependent on the internet quality. Squadcast is a simple browser-based tool that requires no additional software to install. The audio is recorded locally as high-quality WAV files and then magically uploaded to the guest's computer. We've been using them for a few weeks now and love the experience. To get started, go to squadcast.fm for your 14-day free trial. All right, well, my very first fandoms weren't based around books, but I would have to say my first book-based fandom started in probably about fifth grade when our teacher would sit down. I think it was every day. I think, um, I don't think she would make us wait a week. I don't think she was that cruel, (laughs) (laughs) but she would sit down every day and she would read a chapter from the silver chair, which is the sixth book in the Chronicles of Narnia. And Like I was just on the edge of my seat, just like listening to the story because this is my very first like exposure to C.S. Lewis and the world of Narnia. And it was all just so one sounded so wonderful and magical. And I found out that it was a part of a series. And so I may kind of made my parents buy me the whole series. And I just, I read all of them and I loved it. So that was like, I think my very first book fandom was Narnia. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I loved those books as well. Like, so my sister, who's also part of the Public House Media family, she's one of the graphic editors. She'll do a lot of graphics for us. Um, but she was the reader in our family. So she kind of got me into Chronicles of Narnia by just reading them all the time. And I'm like, what are you reading? Is that another one of those books? There's more of them. And then I discovered that like, there's a some people have one way of reading them, like one order. And then apparently there's a different order that yes. other people decide to read them in. I'm not sure, but like I was just really interested in why there was a different order to read them in and just the whole world that C.S. Lewis created around Narnia and everything in it is just so magical. I love it. Oh, yeah, because there's the published order, which is like the order that, you know, obviously he published them in. Right. And then there's the like chronological order, which is like, you know, the order that like the series technically kind of goes yeah. in instead of skipping around. Exactly. And so I was really at first confused by that, but then it also made me want to read it in both ways so that I would like yeah. get, you know, how he intended them to be read and then how chronologically it happens. And like, I like to do yeah. that with other things too, like with in Doctor Who with River mm-hmm. and how she her timeline goes a little bit like bouncing all over the place compared to the doctors yeah. and I I want to watch the series in from River's 
timeline perspective sometime. Ooh, that would be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it would. But anywho, yes, totally love Narnia. And um, I wish they would have done more movies because I loved Ooh. seeing them manifest into people. Although they did obviously have to make some adjustments from you know oh, the yeah. book to the movie. They always have to do that. But... I love it. So I really had a similar experience to what you guys had. And um, I just remember reading the books and not having the movies to watch. So as I got older and Aurelia was able to watch those movies with me, it was a really cool experience to see that. And I totally agree that they haven't made all of those movies, but they also have a lot of wiggle room with the other plot lines that go on um, in Narnia. So it would be really Mm -hmm. cool to see that. Well, also keep in mind, guys, that the ones that fairly, I'm say fairly recently, like within the past decade or yeah. so have come out, those were not the first movies. Oh, that's there true. Was, yeah, there was uh, some movies put out by the BBC in, I think it was, it must have been like the 80s or early 90s, because I remember watching them in, like right after I had first started reading them. So that was like 98 or 99. Okay. Um, when I must have watched them. So yeah, so I mean, it, it had to have been like early 90s or something like that yeah. when they made those. Yes. And I can't remember how many of those that they made. I know, I don't think that they did the silver chair that I remember, but I know they did like, you know, the main ones like the Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe and the ones like that. Yeah, so. now that you now that you mention it, I do remember like at least hearing about those movies mm-hmm. but I don't think I ever watched any of them me either and you know no one's ever made a horse and his boy and that one was my favorite one yeah I love it too that's that's the one people I think usually get down on I don't know if it's be- because they don't it doesn't like involve anybody from like right. our world right. or it or anything like that I, but I love it because I've always kind of enjoyed those books of the series that where you can kind of take a little bit of a look into the world like kind of apart from like any main storyline that's going on that's why in the harry potter series goblet of fire is my absolute favorite oh, i love that that's one. because that's like the most that time that harry spends in the wizarding world with going to the world cup yeah. and everything yeah. like that so that that was the part that always fascinated me to to be able to look into these stories and kind of beyond the main characters that you typically see and kind of see into the background. Shall we delve into Harry Potter then since we just mentioned yeah. it? Because I'm pretty yeah. sure all of us have that one on our list of fandoms as we well. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. I, I think I mentioned this a uh, couple episodes ago, but I started with Harry Potter basically when it first came out and I could not get into anything mm-hmm. else while I was waiting to read Harry Potter. It was the book series that I wanted to read in like third and fourth grade. And I was like about to be of age for Hogwarts and everything. So I like had no idea until I started reading it, what I was about to get myself into, but I knew that everyone else loved it. And it was also super controversial because I grew up going to uh, Lutheran schools all my life and everyone's like, Oh no, it's magic taboo. And someone dies in the book. Why is this children's literature? And I'm like, it's all like, fantasy though right so it's not real we know that (laughs) and so like it i i just i just remember like being very very infatuated with it i Mm -hmm. guess you could say and then like it it became a tradition that my sisters and i growing up would always go to the midnight releases of the books at the barnes and nobles and we'd go out to the midnight movie showings and everything we made a big to-do out of it and i once won a costume contest dressed as mcgonagall and (laughs) it was a lot of fun (laughs) Well, I I grew up in a really super strict home, and so I did not get to read them while I was growing up when I would have kind of normally read them, I guess you could say. Sure. Um, because, you know, like you said, magic, oh my god, it's, it's so bad, and yet Narnia is totally okay. But Yeah, somehow... <laughs> but you know whatever whatever but I did finally get to read it I was in my early 20s and honestly I think I really needed to read it then as opposed to any other time in my life just because of the things that I was going through I think that was when I actually really needed to read it if that makes any that, sense it totally does actually because yeah. Even if you if you read certain things, it makes different impacts on your life. And even something kind of seemingly simple like like the Harry Potter series, you know, there it's it's a really in depth series if you really want to get into it. And it can it can really really change your perspective on things and and really help you. In books in general, do yeah. that whether they're intended to or not. You know, it's funny. I had the exact same experience, but I I, I read them when I was an adult. 
and probably early 20s into, yeah, so I, I probably finished three or four years ago, um, not to say how old I am, but you know, but they were coming out when my little sister was just about to start reading. So she, I kind of wanted to read them to her and I kind of tried, um, starting with uh, Sorcerer's Stone, obviously, and really, really tried, but we just couldn't get into it. You know, when you're that little, your lives become whatever they are and I was too busy or she had too much going on or something. But we just didn't really get yeah. into them at that period of time. So I finally did pick up the books and I even tried to get Aurelia into them too. And that didn't work either. Like they, Oh no. It, feels like <laughs> it sort of just wasn't interesting to her or she, you know, we just fell off. We always have intentions to read something. Even um, there's another series I wanted to talk about in just a minute, but Harry Potter was for me perfect at that period of time too. I think I read it all within um, a, about a year or so and that was in the midst of doing all kinds of other things as well and it just was exactly what I needed to read at that time now unfortunately Harry Potter has uh, ruined other books for me so I have <laughs> oh, a hard no. time if if the story development isn't good if things aren't happening if there's too much wording like if five seconds passes and five pages were just read I have a really rough time getting into the book so after Harry Potter, I have started and not finished so many books because they didn't hold a candle to it. And that, that's really like troubling for me because beforehand it was always like, okay, you're 60 pages in, you got to finish. And now oh, I'm at least 150 to 200 pages into four or five books. So <laughs> oh boy, it's just, it's just been a, um, an enigma from then. Gotcha. Well, you know, I kind of had a similar thing happen to me with Lord of the Rings because um, those movies started coming out when I was like just in high school and I hadn't actually read the books at that time. Um, I had heard of them, but I hadn't read them. And I didn't really know what to think about it or anything. Uh, my parents had gotten, uh, I think they had gotten this new TV or they had gotten a brand new DVD player or something like that. And part of the purchase was that they got a free copy of The Fellowship of the Ring, which they brought home and we they wanted, you know, to sit down and watch it with me. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I remember thinking, oh, this is probably going to be so boring. <laughs> but I watched it <laughs> and I got really into it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to know more. So, you know, I found the books, I bought the books and I read them. But at the time, like, it was just really, really hard for me to get into it. I mean, Tolkien has, you know, a very specific way and a very specific style of writing. And, it, you know, mm -hmm. it's just that high fantasy kind of thing. And it's not really for everybody. And at that time, I was just like, uh, this is kind of boring. It's There's not enough going on. Uh, what's going on? I, I forced myself to finish it. But at the time, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to stick to the movies. And um, earlier this year... I kind of had an idea for a story that I wanted to base in Lord of the Rings, but I kind of felt that I wanted to really do a lot of research and do it justice. And therefore I needed to read the books. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah. okay, well, I guess I'm going to read it and I'm just going to notate and everything, you know, I'm just going to get this done. So I made that my Camp Nano goal was to read the whole series and make notes and everything like that. And I was so surprised when I started reading it and I really, really got into it. Like, I absolutely love it now. Like, compared to the movies, it's it's nothing. That's yeah, awesome. like, I, I guess it's just <laughs> one of those things where you kind of just have to adapt to and kind of get used to that style. And then once you kind of get used to that kind of style of writing, then it's a lot easier to read and get into. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, my first experience with Tolkien was probably during seventh grade or so, what right around when the movies were coming out. I watched the movies because one of my friends from grade school band made me watch them because I had never seen them yet, but we were playing the music in band. And so she's like, you have to see the movies because otherwise you're not going to play the band music <laughs> right. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay, chill out. And also she was like obsessed with Orlando Bloom at the time as well because of his role as Legolas. And so I'm like, okay, we'll watch the movies. And then of course I got obsessed with Orlando Bloom too. Cause I mean, how could you yeah. not? But, <laughs> but right. Like the, uh, whether it was from Lord of the Rings or with, or if it was from Pirates of the Caribbean, <laughs> like some, some, Somebody, you know, it, it got through to somebody. Um, anyways, I, I didn't actually read the books at that time, but I did 
get interested in The Hobbit. And so the summer between seventh and eighth grade, I read The Hobbit. I started it and got super bored by the first like 10 pages because it's just describing what hobbits were like. And I'm like, okay, I get it. They're really boring people. <laughs> They eat a lot. Okay. <laughs> and then and then I like tried it again. I'm like, okay, actually, once you get past the understanding of what hobbits are like, and then you read the rest of it, it makes a lot more sense why he explained so much about yeah. what the hobbits were like. And, 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 and then like one of them goes on an adventure and that was super weird. So that makes more sense. And then I we read the book again. Well, I was in eighth grade for school and I'm like, oh, I already know all this stuff. So this is super fun. And then I also like learned how to write the inscription on the ring in Elvish for an art project or we, maybe it was a uh, maybe it was a um, book book report project or something like that but anywho wh whichever way it was I, I did like get really into writing an Elvish script not an actual Elvish language though I just like transcribed the English letters yeah. into Elvish letters which is still really pretty <laughs> it's just so much fun I don't know what it, I, I loved it I like would write myself code in like on the on like the margins of my notes in school and like be a little nerd about it <laughs> <laughs> but like i never actually read the, the lord of the rings books i I've, I've only read the hobbit and for some reason i just never got into reading the books i will admit i still haven't either i read the hobbit i'm sure of it um and i've got like a really old version of it as well but i definitely never read the other three or the gotcha. million because i oh my goodness but um, yeah well my sister-in-law read that when she was in like uh grade school she's a book nut okay nut, 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 uh, what's she what is she a, a book genius sure a book nut bookworm Worm. Worm. yes yeah. one of her um one of her uh screen names is book crazy bookworm so <laughs> cool. yeah well we'll call her that book crazy bookworm anywho she she read some really in like i don't know seventh or eighth grade oh, maybe fifth or sixth i don't know but she she is very very into reading well and i wanted to clarify too elizabeth was talking about how she got really into them where they came out when she was in eighth grade or something elizabeth you are not 30 years older than you are and i think they came out in like the 50s so no she was saying the movies, yeah, the movies that were out. that peter jackson was doing yeah yeah, they, which is, which is cause they came out, I think he started in 90 in releasing them in 99 or 2000 or something like that. Okay. And yeah. yeah, I was, I was in, that I was a freshman in high school. high school for me. <laughs> the high school students were a lot more into Orlando Bloom than I think elementary kids were. So, Oh, definitely. Yes. I mean, I, I was I like a freshman reason. and um, my friend was in seventh grade. So yeah, that it was pretty much. Yeah, awesome. I was. <laughs> I was like seventh or eighth grade when the Orlando Bloom thing happened. I, I had a poster in my closet. Happened to him? <laughs> I don't know why I didn't want it actually on my wall, though. That was just me being a weirdo. <laughs> so I have a couple of fandoms I'd love to talk about because these also I started reading when I was in grade school, which would have been maybe like late grade school for you guys. You're a little bit older than I am. Um, but I started reading a series of unfortunate events, Ooh. which I forget when I actually started reading those. I, well, it was like really close to the time when Harry Potter was coming out. And I remember getting it in my grade school's library and I don't remember if I started the first book and like didn't get into it because I really wanted to read Harry Potter or if I had already read Harry Potter and was waiting for the next books to come out. Mm -hmm. And then I started reading series of unfortunate events. Okay. At any rate, Lemony Snicket is the pen name of Daniel Handler. So brilliant the way he writes this. If you have not read the series of unfortunate events, like do it. My husband started to try and read them in college and he, that was like a poor time for, or maybe he was in high school, but it was a poor time for him to try and read them because it's written as like satire in oh, a way. Yeah. <laughs> It's great. It's I love it. So good. It's it's kids satire about like these if you haven't read it. It's about these orphan or kids who get orphaned and then there's this bad guy who's trying to get their fortune from them. And so every book in the series there's 13 books, unlucky number. It's an unlucky series of unfortunate events that happen to these orphans and every single book is just a specific adventure along the way and it's so good so so good the movie that got put out there well were there one or two movies one i forget um with with jim carrey i did see that mm -hmm. one yeah it was jim carrey. they were okay there were the, the one or two movies that were put out were okay but they did something really weird with the plot line they combined like three books together into one to make it and then like rearranged the storyline 
so that the end of the first book was just the end of the movie. And like, yeah, so they did something really weird with that. But what, what I really love right now is that there's a Netflix series. There's two seasons out right now. Um, and each episode is like half of a book ish. And so I, I love it because it's Neil Patrick Harris is the main bad guy narrated by, I forget his name, but he was um, Kronk in Emperor's New Groove and also has um, in the second season, Nathan Fillion shows up. Ooh. Right? Um, and just a plethora of other like actors and actresses that you'll recognize. Um, what's her name? Robin How- from How I Met Your Mother oh. is in there sparsely. But yeah, I mean, it's just a really, really well done series. And each each season takes about two or three books out of the whole series to do on Netflix. And it's just really, really well done. I love it. It's narrated. So the 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 Kronk from Emperor's New Groove guy plays the narrator. And you actually like see him and he interjects throughout the episodes. So good. I loved it. It's a, it's a uh, fourth wall break, too. He's actually talking oh, yeah. to you. And, yes, exactly. Uh, and he reacts with characters, too, in, in, in the show. So it's really uh-huh. good to see. It's um, great. The cool thing about the series of unfortunate events is I, my little sister was getting into that when it was coming, when it, as it was coming out and she was buying all of the books. And I thought it was really weird the way they were bound because they, and still are bound where they're real rough edges on the sides. Yes. Um, but my sister read all of them and loved them, sold her, her copies. And then last year, my daughter started reading them in the library at her school, and Uh she was super interested, but, you know, waiting for somebody else to return the book, blah, blah, blah. She wanted them for Christmas, so she got the whole series for Christmas. And the movies, or I'm sorry, the Netflix adaptation came out, and she sat through it and read the book at the same time, so she was, like, not able to watch an episode until she was finished with the book, because you don't know how far that episode is yeah. going to go into the book and she didn't want any spoilers it was just great um, that's awesome it's wonderful it's wonderfully done it's wonderfully acted and yeah i, I couldn't go back to watching jim carrey after seeing neil patrick no harris. i just can't cool. neil patrick harris just really nails that character mm-hmm. but it's so cool that so many of these books are things we read um, when we were younger but then they made movies out of them and we're able to share that and those book series with our children, with with the younger generation, because that's like mm-hmm. my favorite part of of all books in general is being able to say, well, you know what, they did write a book about that, and here exactly <laughs> that I love that about books, like mm-hmm. it's like hey, you know what, there's this story that actually sounds like what you're talking about, right? Exactly, I love it. There's a and, whole and- lot of that going on where there's so much um, that they're just taking a new twist, a new take on something that we already have, have known and, and changed and adapted. So it's, it's cool when it's done well. Exactly. Which I'm really excited about this next book series that I want to talk about. I got into in about sixth or seventh grade, probably sixth grade when it first released Artemis Fowl. I love this book series. It's a, it's a juvenile fiction. It's kind of my wheelhouse is juvenile fiction. I just, I love that genre for some reason. It's just, it's, it's fantastic. And um, I, I read the first book in about sixth grade. And then I ordered the next one from the Scholastic Book Fair. I ordered the second book and then loaned it to like a classmate of mine. And he never returned it oh. to me, but he like, totally didn't think that I loaned it to him or something. He like, I don't know, forgot that I gave it to him and lost it or I don't know what happened, but I never got the book back from him. So I had to buy it again. But in the meantime, I ended up reading the third book out of sequence because I just loved the story so much and the characters and the world that was built because it set place or it's, it takes place in Ireland for a little bit of it, but it also takes you to the world of fairies and centaurs and gnomes and, and all that. And um, it's just, it's so cool the way Owen Colfer has built a reality within our reality. And that's what I loved about Artemis Fowl. And so I read the whole series, but I didn't read past the fourth book until after I got married in 2012. So like I took a huge break from Artemis Fowl while I was in high school and college. And then finally my husband's like, wait, did you know there's more books? There's like eight books total and I did not know that they made more books after the fifth one and so I picked them up again and finished the series and I'm like this is amazing <laughs> and and now they're making a movie coming out next year in 20, 2019 and I'm super excited 
it's I think it's a live action and Disney's doing it. And I really, really hope they do such a good job because I've been waiting for this so long. I really love like so how excited. like all these iterations kind of can connect different generations where, you know, like maybe movies are released like, you know, so long after the book was published or maybe something there's like an animated series that comes up or like a TV mm-hmm. series and you know, it just connects like all these different generations. You know, you got kids watching a series now, whereas you might have read the books when you were growing up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's it's cool because it helps the same story gets told through different forms of media. And and then there's different ways to experience it, too. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I did really quickly want to talk about the Wrinkle in Time series. Um, I know I'm probably going back before you guys, before your time, uh, but it is a five book series by Madeline Langle. And it was the one that I really got into um, because everybody at my age was getting into it. Unfortunately, I only read um, two of the books, Wrinkle in Time and An Acceptable Time, which is the first book and the last book, which is very strange to do. I I think that the other three books were constantly being rented out at the library. Oh, gotcha. um, that was kind of where uh, this whole idea came from was what you were able to read because they were available to you. Um, Mm -hmm. It was interesting because A Wrinkle in Time does the same kind of thing. It's a a world outside of, but also within our world. Um, They have uh, wrinkles in time, obviously. So you take our time and then um, another time and being able to cut uh, the space between those by using some kind of device. So there's a tesseract, there's obviously the wrinkle in time, there's a swiftly tilting, there's a door, there's all kinds of other things that, that show up in the series, but they only made that one movie so far. So I don't know honestly what's going on with that or if there were movies that were based off of those books previously. Um, you know, how we talked about with Marcus and Darnia, how they made a few of those previously. But I think it's really interesting that they're bringing those back because um, that generation that read them at my age is still having children possibly, hopefully, but the age is really working with the the children because, you know, the, the age of the main character is about 11 or 12 years old, and that's now my own daughter's age. So it really, like, took a took a chunk out of my heart with that one because it was so very poignant mm-hmm. for me. Um, that was really cool. I wanted to read those. I, I They were probably above my reading level when they first came out, but mm-hmm. I always like had heard about them and m- knew about them and wanted it. No, I had just got distracted by all these other books that I've been talking <laughs> about that I never got around to it. And uh, I, I think I even like wanted to read it as a book report book in high school. And then I told my teacher, I'm just not getting into this book. And I had a book report due like the following day. And so I decided to change my book last minute. And she's like, uh, I don't believe that about you, but I'll let you change your book anyway. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, and who hasn't done that? You know, like right. who hasn't been reading? I've read so many books, but then I was supposed to read another one. And uh, I ended up having to do my book report on something else too. I'm yeah. sure yeah. that happens now. Yep. I'm pretty sure I did a book report on the Fellowship of the Ring, but it was based on the movie. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Nobody will know, right? <laughs> That's what the movies are for, right? It's like cliff notes for the books, right? <laughs> I always wanted to be that teacher who would catch the kids in the in the in their fibs, you know, to oh, be like, oh, oh yeah. And so what happens in chapter seven? On page thirty-two, uh huh. Because you, you oh, know, the, I always wanted to be that lady. I always the, the English teacher at the high school I taught it was really good about that. I actually based one of my um, forensic science um, murders around that. <laughs> it was it was pretty fun. Um, anywho, <laughs> we also did not talk about. Um, I think it's a, a series now that's out, but I do feel like I remember it from when we were younger. And it was the Magic Treehouse books. Oh, yes. I remember those. I'm pretty sure I read a few of them. And I've read a couple to Aurelia. And it's the same story. It's it's amazing. And it's exactly what we grew up with. You know, the, those two kids who have the Magic Treehouse in their backyard, it magically teleports them to other times and yes. other places and other periods of times. And then they always have some kind of thing that they have to do in order to um, have their adventures and it all stems from you know being bored and not having anything to do so it, it was really yes. cool. I, I think the, the very first book it's raining or or something there's some reason why they can't do anything so they go out to the, the 
treehouse that teleports them out. Um, That's awesome. Yes, I do remember those. We all had to read the boxcar children too. Oh yes, totally read those. I read, I tore through those like nobody's business. Yes. Yeah. I don't think I read all of them nearly, but I tore through as many of those as I could. Oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And, and again, whatever books you could get your hands on. I mean, really. Yeah. Pretty much like my, my reading habits, a lot of time enforced some of my other fandoms. I really had gotten into the star Wars expanded universe and there was one particular series that I absolutely loved. It's called the Jedi apprentice series. It was kind of based around when um, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn like first got together as master and apprentice and kind of mm-hmm. exploring oh. their relationships and some of the missions that they went on. And for whatever reason, like I got like the first like several books and I like devoured them. But then like the rest of the books were so hard to find. Like I could never find oh. them. So I've never gotten to actually like finish out the series. And <laughs> I really need to try and like see if I can order them online or something because it was really, really well written. Like, some of the EU was not that great, but there was some really great aspects of the expanded universe that kind of took the canon material and really just ran with it. Like kind of like approved fan fiction or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I know we talked about that one before, but is that part of the EU that was um, turned out to be retconned? Yeah, like all of the EU was yeah. retconned, except what they have brought back in certain aspects like for instance in the in the cartoon star wars rebels that disney is doing Mm -hmm. uh they brought back a character called thrawn who was a um who was a villain in the expanded universe and timothy zahn actually got to write a whole new book because of this and like detailing the history of like how Thrawn like kind of rose to power in the okay. empire and everything. And Oh my God. Like I, I literally could not put that book down. I read it in one day flat because it was just amazing. Wow. Good. Like I cool. highly recommend it. It's just called Thrawn. And That's cool. yeah. So like pretty much like, um, except for the little bits that they've been able to bring in from the expanded universe, it's all pretty much just retconned. Gotcha. It's interesting to know. Cause I didn't, I didn't know how much of it had been retconned. Um, I just knew that when the new movies were announced, George Lucas said, yep, they're going to take stuff and run with it. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's about all I knew. Well, from my understanding, um, they weren't able to get all of the rights to all of the expanded mm-hmm. universe just because there are so oh, okay. many different like hands in the pots because yeah. there's so many different writers. So many different that writers. makes sense. So they weren't yeah. able to secure all the rights. So I guess they said, you know what, instead of going through all this trouble, we're just going to dump it <laughs> and make it. Yeah. They made it a part of like, um, like a legacy kind of thing where it's like, okay, there's nothing new going to be added to it, but you can still read it. It's, it's all, it's all good. You know, Gotcha, and then I guess, gotcha. uh, I guess Timothy Zahn was on board for bringing in Thrawn, and so yeah, <laughs> good stuff. Well, why don't you guys talk nerdy to us? We uh, we've talked about our fandoms that come from books, and you know the uh, fandoms around that. What what are your fandoms that are from books? Maybe we'll have some great suggestions to start. You can find Beauties and Headcanons on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr to share your nerdy topic suggestions, and also subscribe to this podcast and others from Public House Media on iTunes, Spreaker, Spotify, and wherever good podcasts are found. We love feedback as well, so if you liked this episode, or even if you didn't, please give us a rating and a review so that we can keep making great episodes for you. I'm Emily. I'm Elizabeth and I'm Lindsay, and thanks for getting nerdy with us today on Beauties and Headcanons. Donna from Louisiana. The storm just hit, and we went from donating to the food bank to needing it. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council.